Imagine losing everything you hold dear not to drugs or alcohol, but something as seemingly harmless as masturbation. A bewildering thought, isn't it? Yet, this is a story about just that. An addiction that started as a harmless exploration during my teenage years. A natural curiosity about my body. Over time, it slowly but surely turned into a full-blown addiction. A monster that threatened to devour everything I cherished. In the beginning, it was a simple stress reliever, an easy escape from the relentless demands of schoolwork and social life. It seemed harmless, just a quick release. But as the days turned into months and then years, it morphed into my default coping mechanism. Bad grade on a test, masturbate. Spat with a friend, masturbate. Feeling lonely, masturbate. It was like an insidious vine, quietly creeping into every nook and cranny of my life. By the time I entered the hallowed halls of college, the addiction had taken hold of me completely. I began to withdraw from my friends, preferring the solitary confines of my room over social gatherings. My grades, once a source of pride, began to slide. The hobbies and activities that used to bring me joy were replaced with this all-consuming obsession. The addiction began to cast a long, dark shadow over my life. I was trapped in a relentless cycle of shame and compulsion, spinning around and around with no apparent way out. The more I tried to break free, the tighter the grip of the addiction. It was a silent struggle, an unseen battle that raged within me, invisible to the world outside. I was caught in a vicious cycle of shame and compulsion, unable to break free. This was the harsh reality of my life, a life that was being slowly eroded by an addiction that was as destructive as it was unseen. One night, consumed by guilt and self-loathing, I realized just how much I had lost. A stark reality hit me like a ton of bricks. My relationships were falling apart, my academic future was teetering on the edge, and my self-esteem was lower than ever. I was losing myself, drowning in the depths of an addiction that had taken over my life. There's a saying that goes, the first step towards getting somewhere is to decide you're not going to stay where you are. That night, as I lay in my bed, I made a decision. I couldn't go on like this. I couldn't let this addiction rob me of my life any longer. The next day was the hardest. It's one thing to acknowledge your problem to yourself, but it's a whole other challenge to admit it to someone else. It's terrifying. It feels like standing on the edge of a cliff, knowing that you're about to jump and not knowing if you'll be caught. But I knew I had to do it. I had to take that leap of faith. I reached out to a close friend, someone I trusted implicitly. The words were difficult to find, the confession hard to make. But when I finally managed to voice my struggle, I was met with compassion instead of judgment. My friend didn't turn away, didn't ridicule or belittle me. Instead, they offered their unwavering support. Together, we began researching ways to overcome addiction. We found support groups, therapists, and resources that could help me understand and combat my compulsive behavior. Admitting I had a problem was the first step. I needed help. I needed to break free from the chains of my addiction. And with the support of my friend, I was ready to embark on the long and arduous journey towards recovery. It wasn't going to be easy, I knew that. But for the first time in a long time, I felt a glimmer of hope. I had taken the first step. I had asked for help. And that, my friends, was the beginning of my journey to recovery. The road to recovery wasn't easy. There were setbacks, moments of doubt, but I was determined to reclaim my life. This journey started with a simple yet powerful acknowledgement, admitting that I had a problem. It was like standing at the foot of a mountain, staring up at the climb that lay ahead. The path seemed steep and treacherous, but I knew that the only way out was through. I began by reaching out, first to a close friend, someone I trusted implicitly. It was a relief to find that they didn't judge me. Instead, they offered their unwavering support, standing by my side as I took my first shaky steps towards recovery. Together we dove into research, exploring various ways to overcome addiction. We discovered a world of resources, from online forums to self-help books, but what really made a difference was joining a support group and starting therapy. There I found a collective strength, a sense of solidarity that made the burden of my struggle lighter. My therapist helped me understand the underlying issues driving my compulsive behavior. It was like peeling back layers of an onion, revealing hidden anxieties and insecurities. It was a painful process, but it allowed me to address the root of my problem, rather than just its symptoms. The road to recovery also involved replacing my unhealthy habit with positive activities. I took up exercise and meditation, focusing on my physical and mental well-being. 
I discovered the joy of creative pursuits, finding solace in painting and writing. These activities became my new coping mechanisms, my sources of comfort during times of stress. But perhaps the most challenging part was rebuilding my relationships. It was a slow process filled with apologies, heartfelt conversations and a lot of patience. But it was also incredibly rewarding. I began to reconnect with my friends and family to re-establish the bonds that I had let fray. As I started to regain control over my life, I also regained my focus on my studies. I found a renewed sense of purpose, a drive to succeed that was stronger than ever. Slowly but surely, I began to rebuild my relationships and focus on my studies again. The road to recovery was long and arduous, but it was a journey worth taking, and I can confidently say it's a journey I'm proud to have embarked upon. Looking back, I realized that my addiction was a wake-up call. It forced me to confront my vulnerabilities and seek the help I desperately needed. I had to face the hard truth that I was not invincible and that it was okay, even necessary, to ask for help. It was a humbling experience, but it was also incredibly liberating. For the first time in a long time, I felt a glimmer of hope. Throughout my recovery, I learned many valuable lessons. One of the most important was that shame and fear are not helpful companions on the path to healing. They only serve to keep us stuck in a cycle of self-destruction. Instead, we must learn to cultivate compassion and understanding for ourselves. We must recognize our struggles as part of the shared human experience and not as personal failures. Another lesson I learned is that we cannot do it alone. We all need support and connection to thrive. Whether it's a trusted friend, a family member, a support group or a therapist, having someone who understands and supports you can make all the difference. It's not a sign of weakness to rely on others, but rather a testament to our strength and resilience. Lastly, I learned the importance of replacing unhealthy habits with positive ones. Instead of turning to masturbation to cope with stress or loneliness, I started to engage in activities that nurtured my body and mind. I took up exercise, started meditating and rediscovered my love for art and music. These activities not only helped me manage my feelings in a healthier way, but they also brought a sense of joy and fulfillment back into my life. Today, I can proudly say I'm in a much better place. My relationships are stronger, my academic performance has improved and my self-esteem has been rebuilt. I've regained control over my life and I'm grateful for the journey that brought me here. Recovery is possible and there is a world of support waiting to help you on your journey. Don't let shame or fear hold you back. Take that first step, reach out and start reclaiming your life today.